I got for selling me clothes, Tokens for selling me blankets. If ever I list for a soldier again, Devil shall be me, Sergeant. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gorka modifications. Um, I haven't had a lot of time recently to do anything because I kind of just started a new job. But as people said, if I do any mods to the Gorka or improve it, um, they'd like to see it. Uh, so this will be a little how-to video. Right, um, first thing I did, and I'm, I'm sure everybody else is going to do, that is the armour, the jacket, okay, um, with the robust material. I uh, trace around that so I had a cardboard template and then just with a, so, some simple roll mat okay it's got to be closed um, closed um, closed cell stuff so it doesn't absorb water it's not too thick but it just gives you that um, little bit of protection that you want obviously I traced it round onto a piece of same it's just I mean I think I got this for about two quid off a boot fare uh, and it's more than adequate for what I want to do here um, easy enough to do so when I've got the correct shape obviously here it's easy to do because it's uh, and then you can see it inside yeah um, fold it up push it in then straighten it out shut it up job done um, and that's already you know when you put your elbows on the ground and so forth gives you protection don't really know it's there to be honest um, the only other thing I do and that's up to you so sewed a few little patches on there there's a regimental flash uh, obviously the uh, Union Jack, sorry, just make sure that one was in there. And all I did there was just easy enough to do, even on the machine, just sew a bit of Velcro on um, to put my old patch on and off should I need it. Okay, uh, ladies and gents, that's the jacket. Um, I can't see me doing anything else because quite primarily it doesn't need it. Um, the only thing I thought to do is a bit of uh, Velcro across there, just so I've got, I've got sort of a name tag, Matt Type Wad, and I might put that across there. Um, don't know. Uh, and that's easy enough done because you can get that uh, underneath your machine and just sew up and down there. So that's going to be no problems. I may do that in the future. But that's the jacket, ladies and gents. Uh, and at this point, it doesn't need anything else doing to it. Bring it back in a moment because um, I'm going to do the same to the trousers. Just want to put some knee protection in there. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more work. But guess what? I'm going to show you how I do it. And ladies and gents, this ain't hard. Right, ladies and gents, just to orientate you. That's the bottom of the leg and that's obviously the uh, bottom of the top pocket there so we're now looking at the Gorka trousers now um, they've got a nice double layer of material there that's both that side on the inside uh, and the reinforcing ripstop um, sort of nylon type material on the front now here you can see obviously from my time out yesterday I've got some nice little stains there which shows me exactly where my knee is they're not showing up there but you know like a little watermark and that's cool because the thing dries off quickly even if you get your knee wet but I want a little bit of protection uh, no reason why I can't have it either now there is two ways you can do this um, obviously you, if you want to see like the whole thing done you can unzip the, the inner seam and I've, I've done that when I modded a pair of like normal trousers but these ones are quite simple to do because we've got cross straps and all we need to do on this is sew across as opposed to sewing down okay uh, so it is easy enough to do so Previously, um, we've got the two seams now. I could have gone for the top seam and put my machine in that way, or the bottom seam. Uh, that's to sew round. Um, obviously, if you imagine it like a cardboard tube, either top of it or the bottom of it. Okay, so two two choices. I went for the bottom one, so I'm gonna, I'll bring you in really close on this and I'll show you how I picked it. Well, as I say, everything on this Gorka is double um, sewn, okay? So we know we've got the material behind it, which you'll see in a minute, and uh, the this is the outer material. So you've got two seams there, okay? Now, different ways you can do this, but I prefer it. Um, it's a scalpel blade, extremely sharp. Um, don't want to damage your trousers, so it's a new blade every time. Some people will run it down the front there, but I always, what I always like to do when I'm unpicking something is just, you can identify the stitches, very carefully just pick off a couple and that's going in from the top so I'm identifying the stitch where the actual stitch is comes to the surface and just cutting a few and again being very careful because this is like me being David, my beautiful Gorka again obviously if you are watching this and you've got an interest you may want to do it it's um, frequently get asked to do the uh, how-to videos 
I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, I can't wait to leave on Zach Walker, see what he makes of it, but you don't have to do a great deal to these things. Actually, you do what you want. Now, you see where I've managed to pull that stitching up? I'm going to use the back of it just to force it out a little bit more. Now, I can identify the inner stitch line there. I'm not going to cut anything but the inner stitch line. So the only thing I'm offering up the scalpel to is hopefully you can see that there. Yeah, is the actual cotton itself and not the material. Always keeping my blade away from giving it a pull to expose it and giving it a little bit more. Like I say there was three knots in there. And again, I'm going to go and try and get into the bottom one now. Again, don't try and rush this because the least one you do is, is uh, cut your cotton. So I'm going to have a cut more of them off. Especially when you start off, it really does pay just to attention to detail and take the time because as you'll see later on it does become a lot easier and a lot faster see as I pull it up now I'm just identifying the cotton sometimes it'll be two three or even one lot and that will be pulled apart and then on the inside on the bottom seam it's sewed into it. Well, it's a, I'd say, I'll call it reinforcing stitch for want of a better terminology there. Yeah, and I can actually get my finger in there now. So, ladies and gents, that's it. Um, you can use the little stitch cutters, which are like two prong fork things. I've, they're okay if I've got just a, a single um, stitch to um, undo. But here we go. Every time I do that, now I'm going to go into the inner one. making that hole a lot bigger again okay, some more on the inner one because I can see them okay my focus this is a scalpel my I'm cutting towards me so due care and attention being paid right and there we see on the inner one identify the cottons Pull it all the way back. So now we can see. Um, show me a shot there, ladies and gents. Both like so it becomes a lot easier now to pull, cut, pull, cut all the way down, all the way round. Okay, I would stop just um, ten centimeters either side of that. Okay, um, and obviously in true Blue Peter uh, style, here's one I prepared earlier. I'm going to try and lay it flat. Excuse me. <coughs> and as you can see, there's two layers of stitch in there. And in between, you can see that there's the place where oh, I've got one or two bits of cotton hanging on there. It's sewed really well, this corker, I must admit. But with a sharp blade, it's no problem. Right, and ladies and gents, yeah. There's the fold over part, there's the inner and there's the outer okay and that's going to form the sleeve where I'm going to put um, the uh, padding in. There you see just uh, was out there yesterday nice little um, watermark around there exactly where my knee goes so I've just marked it off and marked it off um, and then kind of measured down by laying it, laying it flat on there you'll see that it narrows in as it goes so I, I cut off initially a square um, that one was easy enough to trace down so then once I did that with a square side I uh, I turned that round and then just drew that so both are identical and that's how I'm going to have the uh, the pad in there you could I suppose make lose a, an inch off the top or the bottom but I'm just not going to bother doing that it's not going to cause me any problems whatsoever so now with that I'm going to fold that up get that inside and obviously if you're doing the gorka or other trousers it's nice because I haven't had to sew this on that's um, where it's going to go inside that sleeve there 
So I'll bring you back in a second when I've done that because it's probably going to be a lot of huffing and puffing and one or two swear words. Right, um, it's now inside, ladies and gents. I'll just fold it up. I'll just literally show you really because it's not that hard to do. Because you've got that. Fold her up. Put her in. And again, I've made a, a rough measurement, but at the, from the very start, flatten it out inside here now. Um, in fact, it's almost like a, I'm quite happy with that, it's a perfect little fit, but I'm finding that's a little bit close to that seam which I'm going to be re sewing up. So I'm probably going to take about that much off, so the whole thing, I can push it up, yeah, about that much off, so I can push it up, sew it up, and it will naturally drop down to where I want it. Uh, no dramas so far, very easy to do, ladies and gents. So uh, I'll get that sewn up and um, I'll bring you back. But once we're here, the way it's easy enough to do, um, if you imagine your sewing machine's there, I'll try and get around the other side, hang on. And then there's the sewing machine. Just turn that around, sorry. There's the sewing machine there, and that's the bit where your needle goes up and down, okay? It's got the arm, so I'm going to feed that through the arm, yeah? So that's where the needle will go up and down. Okay, um, you can have come in the top way and undone that one, that seam at the top, but I just thought it's easy enough just to do that, yeah? So same machine, I'm gonna thread that round, so it literally can just be sewn round in a, uh, in a loop if necessary. Uh, yeah, so it's just seen that there. I want that, just perhaps a short little bit. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to take a small strip off that, okay? Um, I'm just going to, again, fold, fold it underneath, line it up, and sew it across. I'll bring it back when I've done that. Uh, and I'll do exactly the same on the other one, and that's it. It's really easy to do. Uh, I like a little bit of padding on my knees, although, I must admit, through the gauzes and, uh, you know, all your uh, stinging nettles and so forth, this stuff really does give your legs protection. Uh, but I like that because of my old knees. Um, when I'm bending down, you always land on that little twig that really hurts, doesn't it? Right, so, same machine in there, ladies and gents. Line that seam up again, no dramas. And I'll just sew along that line there to seal it up again. And it's literally, it is can be as simple as that. Um, the only other thing I did mention with the Gorka, uh, or I didn't mention, was um, it's elasticated, and initially when it came out, a strip of... Um, this material and a strip there which is meant to go underneath you know in your boot to keep your um, jacket pulled down or sorry the uh, leg pulled down at all time I didn't like the idea of that I think it's a bit mental so I just cut it off and it's as simple as that but obviously if you've got a walker you'll know what I mean with that strange two little straps that hang down there anyway bring you back when I've uh, finished one leg right ladies and gents I think I'll I don't want to bore you to death but if you're watching this it's because uh, you've got an interest anyway um, I need, now I need to sew um, two seams on the, on the actual uh, leg of my Gorka. Like I say, um, my machine comes with a plate that goes across there, makes it a big working surface. You can take that off as I've done here. And this is what I mean, how it's easy to do with uh, this one. And you can do it with other trousers if they're built similarly. That's the leg. I'm going to slide that underneath my foot. Okay, get the whole weight of the trousers on me, my lap and I'm going to do two seams now we hopefully you can see that there's that and that I want to seal that together and then once I've done that and I've, I've saged them edges again so to stop and fray them I'll bring that over and sew it too so I'm just reconstructing the trousers uh, and you'll see what I probably mean it'll become apparent to you if you're, you're doing this or a similar pair of trousers so at this point I want that top one out of the way because I'm not sewing that at the moment line it up exactly where it was from there and because I'm going to seal this seam and stop it from fraying, again sealing it inside, there's the actual um, roll mat inside there. All I'm going to do is select quite a wide number three and number four. So as you'll see, it's the, the, a wide zigzag stitch, if that makes sense, just to seal over that little tube there. All right. Make sure that's out of the way. Make sure I haven't got nothing folded underneath. And uh, away we go. And as you can see, I'm going to go backwards now just to seal that seam as I started it off. 
and then forward making sure I pull everything out of the way and pull it tight no need to go fast speed if you hear that noise booty's trying to beat up my uh, roll mat on the floor booty leave that alone not to go again main sure that's out of the way again pull just let the machine take it go up to the edge and obviously just to seal it backwards just take it one or two bits back right ladies and gents um, there's a zigzag stitch all the way down there so that's now se uh, sealed I've sealed that in and that will prevent any fraying pull it out always best to cut your cottons um, exactly when you can that's the first two start off ones Again, now I'm going to take the top bit and pull that over. taking a little bit of time um, there I've got that nice and tight nothing underneath it making sure that's pulled up to exactly where it was before and literally just slowly feed it through Right, I'm going to just do start off with a, a slight zigzag, then I'm going to stop it and go back to a straight stitch. And again, because it's got elastic on this side, there we go. Right, now I've done that, go backwards, just to seal that stitch, and, and put it on number four. So it's just a, a normal straight stitch now, up and down, ladies and gents. And all I've got to do is be very careful, hard to grip. That's not, you've just got to be careful how you do it and go slowly, slowly and adjust it as you go. pull it again line it up this is exactly there not the time to rush anything that's just my machine it's having trouble the materials quite as I say quite tough Okay, and I should be able to now to pull it on this side what you can see um, I'm making sure that um, it's all lined up and as you see me just stopping that stitch right ladies and gents uh, that's effectively sewn up once remember um, I want to put a second uh, row of stitching so if that first one like the original Gorka is it they are well made if that one ever goes there's one below it okay so again it's the same principle cut your cotton I'm gonna have to pull it off to get the other cotton make sure they come through and behind <laughs> I can um, push a button to make this go backwards, but um, if you did that, one stitching will come undone. They're both, but it's like, you know, when you, you, you pull a zigzag, it will, it will come off. So that, that's one separate stitches. Um, locked off that end, locked off that end, and I'll go back now. 
do one literally the same width as the double stitching uh, that was originally there and it's still a little um, hole so it's not going to be hard to line it up all right, I'm going through like a triple seam there again come back as you're doing anything and seal that seal that seam only needs to be two or three and then just slowly guide it through the machine because that first line of stitching um, I took my time to make sure the first line of stitching was straight and in the right place and again as you're coming through you always make sure none of this has slipped underneath your foot otherwise you'll sew it Again, triple seam again here but go over it a few times and ladies and gents once I cut that cotton literally that is it sewed up again um, two rows of stitching as it had originally that's the now in there um, inside that sheath this would take me sort of I don't know 20 minutes half hour to do at the most probably it doubles the time filming it anyway um, but obviously on here if I wanted I can push that leg all the way on and do another row of stitching there for whatever reason if I needed to. But what you can't do is turn your leg round. I'll show you. That's why you've seen me on the other trousers have to uh, unsit, un, unstitch the inseam or the inside seam. Because what you can't do is get that over there to push it through the machine. But it will go round. Same as doing cuffs easy at the top of bottom or top of the bottom of the trousers or your cuffs is easy to do because it will just go around there forever and a day but you can't turn it round and sew it up that way so ladies and gents um it's getting a bit dark now so if i show you these tomorrow um then that's fine but all i've got to do now is just do exactly the same to the other leg um and i'm sure you don't need me to uh, re repeat um everything i've done so far so in short it was a quick unstitch measure out shove it in seal the two um edges there uh, with a zigzag stitch, stitch stop it from fraying one lot of stitching and two lot of stitching as long as they're locked off that's it job done i've now got a nice bit of padding uh on me, me gurkha trousers and ladies and gents that is it that is the only modification i'm going to make to these uh gorgas because that's what I, i'll be honest you know i'm a bit of a theme for modding stuff in my idea I, I can't think to improve them ladies and gents but anyway, take care and uh, obviously I hope that's helped and uh, not bored you because as I say, if you're watching me how-to videos it's because you want to sort of uh, know how to do it or see how the Mac old tight wood saves himself a few bobs and just improves his kit. So ladies and gentlemen, on that point, thank you very much.